many of you know here at the Hook Nook when we're not out foraging or gardening or cooking or making random products we also run crochet classes in person classes Sunday 6 till 7 p.m. but ever since 2020 we also added a zoom class and those are Mondays and Tuesdays 12 30 till 1 30 as the witching season is almost upon us, our last couple of weeks at the Hook Nook, we have been doing lots of different Halloween -y crochet projects. So in between our Zoom and our actual classes, we made this cute stuffed pumpkin. We made a spider web that we blocked and sprayed with lacquer so it stayed nice and firm. And that was a window decoration. We made this really cute spider web bunting that looks really cute on any wall. Did this one in red for my daughter's room. And today, well, in yesterday's class, we we're actually making these well, I suppose they're supposed to be wind spinners, but as we're pretty much always guaranteed rain around here, they are indoor decorations for us. These Halloween-y inspired ones, I've done this one in purple and red and a sparkly red, again for my daughter's room. These ones have these cute little puffy spiders on the end, the Halloween inspired ones, but we have made them in peaches and blues and pinks for Easter, we've made them in red and green with bells on the bottom for Christmas. We even made them for May Day with big puffy flowers on the end of them for May Day this year. I am going to, despite knowing better, make these in black and orange to hang from the big tree in our garden and hopefully this year we won't get rain. So what you need is your colours of choice. I'm using the purple, the red as the base and the sparkly red as the trim on the outside. These are all just worsted weight four ply yarn and to keep it nice and tight I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook. You can make these as long or short as you like. I used 120 chains and mine was 72 centimeters on the spinner and about 92 with the spiders included. So we're going to start with our slip knot. So working or tail end over the working yarn, put your finger on the tail end, flip the loop over and pull through and then tighten that onto our hook. So as I said, I started with a chain of 120. So yarn over, pull through until you have your required length of chains. Once you have as many chains as you want, we're then going to single crochet all the way back along that row. So into the second chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two and I will see you back when you have completed row one which is single crochet in every stitch along. So I'm almost at the end, I think I have about six left to do. Now I start at the end each time and work my way up, it just seems to make it neater. So once you've completed your row one of single crochets, we're going to snip our yarn chain one and pull that through to secure that edge. Don't worry about those tails so much at this end as we will be covering them up at the end. So if you just wanted your base to be the same color that's fine continue with that same color but we're going to go into that it would have been that one that we missed at the end when we single crocheted into the second. So that very first stitch and now I'm going to attach my purple. I've got my hook through the hole and I'm attaching that slip knot of the purple in the back and I'm just going to pull that through that first chain. Now we're going to be working in doubles. So I'm going to chain three and into that very same hole I'm going to double crochet, so yarn over in through that same hole, it's quite tight, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. 
and we're going to do two double crochets in every single stitch along now if you wanted to make your curls a bit tighter then do three double crochets in each stitch along and i'm going to do this up until about 80 where I have 40 left over. So I'll meet you then when I've done 160 double crochets or two double crochets in each stitch along. So now I am coming to the end and as you can see, it started to curl up nicely. Said you can make these curls tighter by just doing three double crochets in each, but I do like mine quite loose. But I want mine to get larger as it gets to the top. So instead of doing double crochets now, I'm gonna do treble crochets. So wrap twice into the next hole, pull through, wrap and pull through two, wrap and pull through two and wrap and pull through two again and then again into the same stitch another treble crochet wrap and pull through two wrap and pull through two and wrap and pull through two and i'm going to do this for the next 19 stitches so in 20 stitches i'm going to do two double crochet well two treble crochets in every stitch along you can of course just keep going on with the double crochets if you like so I've done two treble crochets in those 20 stitches and now to make it even larger I'm going to do double treble crochets so I'm going to wrap my yarn three times and then into the next hole wrap and pull through wrap and pull through two wrap and pull through two wrap and pull through two and wrap and pull through two again now you probably saw in one of my last videos that if you wrap twice once you've wrapped and pulled through you wrap and pull through two three times if you've wrapped three times then it's four times and so on and so forth so you know you've completed your stitch properly so i am going to do two double crochet double treble crochets rather in every stitch along until i get to the end and i'll see you back so i'm almost done with round two and i'm just doing my last two double trebles in that last stitch moving my tail out the way so it doesn't get mixed in see you can sew those in once you've completed them if you like but if you see when we do the trim it will actually make it a bit easier as they do kind of get hidden as we're going along so that's my final double treble and again i am going to snip my yarn and chain one and pull that through to secure the end of round two so i'm just going to give that a little twist get it all in shape it is actually coming together really nice now and as you see my bottom's quite thin but my top has got larger and i do like the effect that gives so now for the trim i've got that sparkly red so again i'm just going to do my slip knot and now on the end rather than going into the top of the purple i'm actually going to go into that red single crochet bit at the bottom and attach my hook and ooh, pulling the wrong side pull the working yarn carly and now i'm going to pull that slip stitch through stick my yarn where it's supposed to be so pull that slip stitch through and then i'm going to work that tail in as well so i don't have to sew it in later and we've got the three or the chain three here so i am going to just single crochet with this red into each of those holes it look there should be three sections to the stitch so along that chain three or actually there is going into each of those chains on the chain three i'm just going to do a single crochet and now we're at the top of the first double we did so we're going to single crochet in there and we're going to single crochet in every one of those doubles then trebles then double trebles all the way along until we get back to the end of our work 
So 240 single crochets, or well actually 244 single crochets, almost completed. And I'm just doing the single crochet on the top of the last one. And now we have the double treble, so it's technically five sections. And we're going to single crochet into each of the top of those. Now you do actually want to work through that tr uh, double treble crochet that you did. So just find your little holes where you can and pop your hook in and single crochet all the way back to the end till you get to that red beginning line. So I've got three, I've still got four and five more spaces left to go. Well, I've actually got four. It can be quite tight getting into that stitch, but if you just get your hook in and maneuver it about, you should be able to get in there. So now we're just right at the end. One last purple to go and then in through that single crochet at the end into the red to finish that off. Again, we are just going to chain one. Now I do actually wrap this chain one around those other strands to secure them in a bit more and chain one and pull through to complete. And that is our spinner completed and you can just sew in your ends now. You don't need to sew in that purple as you did sew it in with the trim, but if you so wish, then sew that in. And now we're gonna get on with making the little speeders to hang on the end. I've already made my purple with the thicker yarn, so he is going to be slightly bigger, and I'm using the thinner sparkly red to make the little spider. So I've done the purple, we're gonna work through the little red one together. So you can either start with a magic circle or you can start with a chain four. A magic circle, you would wrap your working yarn across and over your tail and then pull your tail through, twist your hook and chain one. I do find that this makes it a little difficult to work into the end. So if you want to do it the easier way, you can just chain four with me now. So instead, we're going to make our slip knot, chain four, and then slip stitch into that first chain to make our ring. So yarn over and pull through everything on the hook. Then going to chain one and in through that loop we're going to do six single crochets in through the loop. So into the loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through both. And we're going to do this till we have six single crochets on our hook. Five and six and then we are going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made to complete round one. Pull your tail and now for round two, we're going to chain one and we're going to do two single crochets into each stitch along. So now we will have a stitch count of 12 at the end of round two. And then slip stitch to that first single crochet to complete round two. For round three, we are going to increase on every second stitch. So chain one, single crochet into the first stitch, two single crochets into the second, one single crochet into the third, and two single crochets in the fourth. And at the end of round three, we'll have a stitch count of 18. So just finishing off two single crochets in that last stitch and then we're going to slip stitch to that first single crochet to complete pull tight snip our yarn chain, chain over and pull through and that is the first part of our body we're now going to repeat this process but at the end of round three we aren't going to snip our yarn off and complete it so do this again don't snip off your yarn and I'll see you when you have a second circle. 
Now for these I am leaving my tails quite long as I am going to use them to be stuffing the spider rather than use some more stuffing. So I'm just finishing round three and slip stitching to the end. So again I have a stitch count of 18 and I'm now going to chain one and grab my other body. Now I'm turning it the other way round so that the neat side or the yarn I was working or the side I was working on is on the outside and I am going to go in through that hole the one that I just slip stitched into and I'm going to find the corresponding slip stitch on my other circle and I'm going to go through that as well to attach them together and I'm just pulling those tails out the way keeping them down as I will be stuffing with them and I am going to single crochet into that first stitch pull those tails down then chain one and again in through both those pieces into the next stitch I'm going to do one double crochet now we're doing the head right now as you see I'm through both of the circles so one double crochet and then into the same hole I'm going to do one treble crochet so wrap twice actually I'm going to be doing three treble crochets so we've got one double and one treble and do two more trebles all in through that same hole so I've got three trebles then one more double and then a chain one and then single crochet into that next next stitch along again making sure you get both the front and the back pieces so we should now have 15 stitches along now onto the legs we're going to single crochet through the next stitch again on each of those stitches make sure you get the front and the back then for his leg we're going to chain seven and then into the second chain from the hook we're going to slip stitch down six times and that should bring you back to the body so five and six and then single crochet into the next stitch along or oh, sorry six and then yep single crochet into that next stitch and then again chain seven for leg number two and repeat this until you have four legs in total so that's my fourth leg completed and we're now going to single crochet again through the front and the back we're going to single crochet across the next six stitches and then now for his other four legs so hold on we'll just do that last one and now for his other four legs again we're going to chain seven and slip stitch into the second chain from the hook after this first leg i find it a good time to grab something pokey and give those extra tails and bits a good shove in so once i've completed his first leg i'll use whatever i can find that's pokey and tuck all those tails into the middle of mr speeder so i've just done the first leg i'll single crochet back in again pull my loops up and shove those tails in once they're all nice and hidden we're going to complete his other three legs so again chain seven slip stitch down single crochet until he has three or three more legs rather and i'll meet you at the end here i've just done my fourth leg and we just have that one last space at the end so we're going to single cro or slip stitch rather into that space now again i'm going to leave a long ish tail so i'm just going to snip that chain one and pull through to complete 
Now to hide their tail, we're going to sew it in. So I'm just going to take my darning needle and I'm going to stick it right through his body from the bottom end all the way up to where, the, well actually from the top end all the way down to the bottom. Thread that excess yarn through my needle and just pull it into his body to hide it. Lift that excess off and now my very, very cute spider is completed. And now time to attach these two to our wind spinner or hanging decoration, whatever you end up using it as. Now, if you are going to be using these as wind spinners, it is actually easier if you just tie some string through the top as it helps it spin easier. But as mine are going to be inside and my kids do play with them, I'm going to crochet in a tag. So I've just gone into a little bit right of the middle, so one stitch right of the middle. I'm going to attach my purple yarn make this bit as long as you want but I chained 15 and I did use both the threads in this to save me having to sew the bit in later so once I've wrapped that a couple of times I can just trim that off and I think I trimmed or I crocheted or I chained rather about 20 maybe 25 and then slip stitch into the 12th chain from the hook just to make my loop again you can make your loop bigger so slip stitched down as big as I wanted the loop to be and then just slip stitch down every stitch along and then back into the wind spinner to secure it again back into that wind spinner into the next stitch Ooh, really tight I missed that stitch there, slip stitch, snip my yarn, chain one and pull through and I will sew that one back in the chain later. I could snip that other bit as I crocheted that in. So now down to the other end to attach our speeders and I will be attaching them with the red. So right down in the bottom of that one, I'm just going to attach my red, pull that through and I am going to chain as many stitches as I'd like my first spider to start. So I chained about 12 here, and I'm gonna give myself a long tail, just in case. I probably, well, I definitely won't need that much. So I'm just going to chain one and pull that yarn through. So I'm actually finishing this chain off here. So I'm just gonna pull that through to finish it thread the other end through my needle and then I am to attach him the purple one first I'm just going to go through his head not very nice and all the way through his body and I'm going to pull him up to where those chains finished to secure him he's nicely in place and then to attach my next one, I am going to do my next slip knot as close to his bum or his body as I can get to secure him in. There is a little bit of leeway there, so I'm going to try and make that a bit tighter actually. Hold that in there and pull it right up to his bum to keep him in place. And then I am going to again chain as many chains as I want for the next space where my next little speeder is going to go. I think I did my first gap of about 12 and my second gap of about 10. Again, we're just going to chain one and pull our working yarn through once we've got our preferred length. Pull that through. Now I definitely don't need this much excess yarn. So I'm going to snip that off, pull it through to secure, and then repeat exactly what I did with the first one. Thread my needle through my speeder or through my yarn, my yarn through my needle, other way around. And again, attach speeder number two. Now to make sure he stays in place, 
I'm just going to tie a knot at the end of him and then I'm going to thread my needle back and forth through his body a couple of times, A to hide my tail and B to make sure that he stays in place. And that is our very cute little wind spinner with spiders on the end complete. As I said, this project can be used for any seasonal decoration. We will be making some more with some skulls on and probably some with ghosts on, who knows? The options are endless and this is such a cute, easy project. My kids absolutely love it. Uh, let us know if you guys give it a go, what you thought of the video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and obviously post any pictures if you do try it and let us know any other Halloweeny ideas that you'd like. We will be doing a couple more videos of Halloween themed, so please come back and watch our next videos. Hope to see you then. Bye!